So a lot of people ask, do you need to spend a lot of money to get a decent camera and lens setup? Something that's gonna take good photos and something that's gonna feel like a decent step up from a mobile phone. Well, the answer depends. It can be very easy to get carried away looking only at the latest and greatest technology in cameras and lenses. And that can feel like it does cost a bit of extra change just to get involved. But that isn't necessarily the case. You can look at older cameras, you can look at the kind of lower end cameras, and of course you can look at used cameras as well, which we're gonna be doing today, looking at something like this. The latest cameras, so something like a Sony a7R5, a Canon R5, an R3, you know, a Nikon Z8, which is a beautiful camera, are going to have massive advantages to the way you use them. They just make your life a lot easier as a photographer. When it comes to autofocus, they're incredible. I mean, it really is like magic at this point. You can bump the ISO up like crazy so you don't have to worry too much if the lighting isn't perfect. They can shoot very, very quickly. There's all kinds of things that they do as a tool to make your life as a photographer a lot easier. And that obviously comes at a cost. But essentially, outside of those additional tools, it all comes down to you as the photographer, right? So it's still all about composition. It's still all about lighting, the subject, the way you frame it. Everything still comes down to the photographer. So if you use a lower end camera, or an older camera, you're not gonna have the same tools that you have on those high-end cameras, but you're still gonna be able to capture some beautiful images if you take your time and you just apply all of those things we just talked about, composition, lighting, framing, you can come away with some beautiful shots. Now, something like this, which is the Canon 550D, not a new camera, not a new camera by any stretch of the imagination, but this is our used apartment with a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens. This setup, is under 200 pounds. That gets you decent performance, which is definitely gonna feel like a step up from your smartphone. And to be honest, if you take your time with it, you can get some beautiful images with a setup like this. The camera itself is of course able to shoot in RAW, so you can edit your photos on the computer, maybe in Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One or whatever it is you want to edit them in. So you can absolutely get them looking exactly the way you want. The autofocus is obviously not as good as a new camera, but it's still not bad. And with a nice fast aperture lens like this, it's very, very easy to get some beautiful photos, especially things like portraits or taking photos of flowers and certainly going out and doing landscapes as well. Now, this is a crop sensor camera, so it's APS-C. That means that this, as a 50 millimeter lens, is giving you roughly the full frame equivalent of around 85 mil. That's perfect for portraits. That's lovely for all kinds of things. With a nice fast aperture, you're getting some beautiful shallow depth of field. And it's not kind of a digital effect like you would see on a smartphone. It's not even that heavy as a system either. This is actually pretty light to hold. And with this lens as well, this weighs almost nothing. This is quite a nice kind of out and about every day, maybe a travel system. And if you don't want something as kind of chunky as this, because DSLRs were a little bit chunky, you could look at something like Fujifilm where we've got all kinds of stuff in our used apartment, which gives you a similar kind of spec, but maybe with a Fujifilm, because it's a mirrorless camera, it's a little bit smaller. I didn't expect to enjoy using this camera nearly as much as I have while shooting this video. It could be going back to DSLRs, so there's a little bit of nostalgia there, but I think it's the limitations. Having autofocus that is, it's fine, but it's not doing any of the stuff that we're used to at this point. Not being able to bump that ISO up, so really having to think about my lighting. Do I want to use a tripod so that I can use a slower shutter speed? Because of course, there's no in-body image stabilization here. How do I want to use the aperture? Do I want a shallow depth of field? Do I want to stop it down a little bit? I've been thinking more about my shots because of the limitations of this camera. And it's actually been a really fun exercise to go out and shoot with this. I also, I've got to say, I just love the feel of it. It just feels really, really nice. and. Stuff like just the noise, the shutter noise. Oh, it's so, so good. And it's something that I miss from DSLRs as well. And I mean, you've still got an LCD screen on the back, which you can use to review your shot. And you've still got a few options for how you actually want to use the camera on here, but it's all very intuitive, all very straightforward. And I've really enjoyed it. So the answer to the question, I think, is that no, you don't have to spend lots and lots of money to get into photography or to get a decent camera and lens set up. You might find that this is a little bit tight, it's a little bit too zoomed in, so you might want a wider angle lens. It depends on the kind of style that you want to shoot. Personally, for me, this is fantastic. But again, you might want something a little bit different, but that's each to their own. What you're going to get by spending more money is, of course, a newer camera, a more advanced camera, and it's going to have more tools available to you to make it easier, to make your life easier as a photographer and to make sure you are nailing the shot. But there is something to be said for slowing down, for using something like this. You know, sometimes it's very easy to forget how far we've come when it comes to things like autofocus, low light performance, 
speed of shooting. And I know personally, I become complacent so fast with that kind of thing. It's lovely to go back and feel a slightly different kind of camera. I'd also love to know, what do you think about this kind of thing? Would you go back? Would you use something like this? How do you feel about it? Would you miss the new kind of technology too much? Or do you really not care about that at all? I'd love to know. So let me know down in the comments because that's always really interesting. Well, you can also check out all of this kind of stuff. We've got loads of it. Not just this either. We've also got higher end cameras. We've got loads of used stuff over in our used department. I'll pop a link down in the description so you can go and check everything out. But whatever you're looking for, camera lens for whatever system, there's loads of stuff to check out over there. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new content all the time. I will see you next time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.